Nation in Conversation, taking you on a journey through the South African countryside. Proudly sponsored by Monsanto, Nedbank and Senves. In association with Hinterland and NWK. And welcome to Nation in Conversation on our journey through the South African countryside. This week, our route took us to the Northwest province, and it's clear why this is such a popular attraction with something to offer literally everyone. On our trip, we visited a vegetable producer to gain more insight into this industry. This is what you can look forward to in today's program. In Homegrown, we focus on the picturesque area around the Hartbeerspoort Dam and explore some of the attractions in the surrounding area. Our trip then led us to a local producer who shed some light on this industry. In our In Context segment, Chris Burgess joins us for his weekly opinion and we make a turn at the impressive fresh produce market in Johannesburg. Economist Lindy Strubel from PMA then joins Mpumelelo in dialogue to unpack the issues in this industry. The Northwest Province is known as the heritage destination of South Africa. In the Bojanala region of this province lies the Hartbeerspoort Dam, constructed in 1925. Its current capacity is 205 million cubic meters, and its shoreline, when full, stretches about 56 kilometers. Surrounded by the majestic Michalisburg mountain range, this is a spectacular tourist destination that also offers a variety of water sports like yachting, windsurfing, water and jet skiing. Located close to both Johannesburg and Pretoria, this is a popular destination for weekend getaways and day trips for families. The Aerial Cableway is a must-do experience in the area an exciting cable car trip on the longest mono cableway in Africa. Visitors can enjoy panoramic views of the Michalisburg, Hartbeerspoort Dam and surrounding areas. With as much to do at the base station as at the top, this is an outing not to be missed by any family. Apart from Hartbeerspoort Dam, this region has a lot to offer. For the more adventurous at heart, there are many activities that will get the adrenaline levels soaring. For the outdoor fanatics, this area is popular for its hiking trails and bird watching prospects. There is a local aquarium, a private zoo, a snake park and the village of Hartbeerspoort for a leisurely stroll. Get up close and personal with elephants at the Elephant Sanctuary at Hartbeerspoort one of three in the country. The area is very popular amongst visitors and tourists for the resourceful arts and craft markets, where almost anything local can be found. Lovers of craft beer and local cuisine can pop in at any of the many pubs and restaurants in the area. Whether it's adventure, good family times or relaxation that you're after, the Hartbeerspoort region offers enough to surprise you. In this region, we stopped over at John Griffiths on his farm, Fallsput, to share his passion with us. He was chosen as Agri Northwest Young Farmer of the Year in 2016, and with good reason. Let's have a look. I've been farming here for the last 10 years in the Crocodile Valley. Um, uh, I have an irrigation farm, and um, I'm producing about nine different crops, which consist of two vegetable crops, which is cabbage and spinach. Um, and the others is, uh, is, is maize, seed maize, uh, popcorn, sugar beans, uh, oats, 
that, that, that we produce for, for game feed. I deliver to Pretoria uh, and Johannesburg fresh products market. I'm farming on about 500 hectares under irrigation um, and I've got about 100 hectares that I'm using for uh, game at the moment. I would say the basic guidelines to producing a quality product uh, is good fertigation, step one. Um, definitely uh, effective but yet responsible pest control. Um, the right irrigation at the right time. And then definitely the harvesting, the handling and the transport of the product is very important. And it should be done with care. Um, and it should also be done as soon as possible from harvesting to get the product uh, as fresh as possible to the consumer. I would definitely say our biggest challenge is, is nature itself. Um, like we can see here today, I mean, it's wet, we are working in the mud. Um, the one day we will have 40 degrees Celsius, which is not good for our plants. The next day we'll have 100 millimeters of rain, which is also not good for our plants. So that's our biggest challenge. And I mean, the only way for us to, to overcome that challenge is to adapt, by, adapt to the circumstances daily. Adapt to it and then manage it. That's our only way of, of dealing with it. I think uh, the initiatives that we are undertaking for the community is definitely job creation. I think uh, but we, what we should remember is that um, in our community, we usually uh, um, have workers which is unskilled and have no uh, um, qualification whatsoever. So to take a person like that, to train him um, and to train him into a job that he can be proud of, that he can do and um, in and by doing that, he can earn uh, good money to, to sustain his family. I would say um, agriculture plays a very important role in our community. I would say that we are almost 100% dependent on agriculture. Um, around here, if you are not a farmer, you are working for a farmer. And if you're not working for a farmer, you're selling something to a farmer or you're either delivering a service to a farmer. So we are almost 100% dependent. We are doing direct seeding. Uh, from direct seeding uh, up to where we are harvesting here today, I would say it takes about six to eight weeks, depending on the weather. Um, the, the colder it gets, the longer it takes. It can go up to, up, uh, up to eight weeks. And uh, the warmer it gets, the quicker the plant grows and we can harvest it by six to seven weeks. Uh, the spinach gets harvested by hand, like we can see here today. Uh, it gets made into bunches. After getting loaded up here, it goes to the pack house where it gets cleaned and it gets trimmed so that it looks neat. After that, it gets packed into boxes and it gets, uh, and it, uh, gets transported to Joburg and Pretoria. Did you know? In the commercial value chain, vegetables mainly go to the four biggest fresh produce markets in Johannesburg, Tswane, Cape Town and Durban. Yet another success story, testimony to the incredible hard work put in by producers to deliver top quality products to consumers, but also to make a real difference every day. After the break, Chris Burgess joins us in studio and we take a walk through the fresh produce market in Johannesburg. Welcome back to Nation in Conversation. Remember that you too can join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter. Today we take a deeper look into the vegetable industry and with me is Chris Burgess, Editor-in-Chief of Landbouw Wierkblad. Welcome Chris. Chris, a lot of consumers buy their vegetables from street hawkers. How big a market for producers are these street hawkers? It's a very big market. Um, some estimates uh, um, go up to a third of all fresh produce gets uh, distributed by, by the informal market and uh, for some vegetables up to 60%. So a lot of research is going into finding out how producers, traditional produ producers can, uh, can service this market better. So you find uh, big potato producers in the free state, for instance, um, 
uh, putting out smaller packaging specifically aimed at this market, but then also from the from the haw from the hawker side. I mean, these are very very good business people. Um, I remember a story: Johan van Deventer, MD of Shoprite, uh, Shoprite's Fresh Mark, which is their fresh produce division. He always said that these are some of the best business people that he's ever seen. They're absolutely spot on with their location. They're absolutely spot on with their with their packaging, with their pricing. Um, so it's a big market, um, and and uh, producers really take it very seriously. Well, how do we know that what we're buying from street hawkers is still fresh? Well, I don't think your street hawker can afford not to sell uh, um, fresh produce because uh, the consumer will just go to the to the guy next to him. And I think the fresh produce market too. I mean, it's it's um, all the producers know that if you if you supply the fresh produce market with with fresh produce with good quality produce, you get a premium. So there's sort of a regulate self regulating mechanism built into the market. Before we continue our discussion with Chris, we investigated the buzz of activities at the Joburg Fresh Produce Market. This insert should give you enough reason to get out of bed early to experience it for yourself. To give you a bit of background, uh, we have 20 commission markets in South Africa. Um, right over the, uh, across the country, from up in Limpopo, Polokwane and Mukitsi, down to, to, to Cape Town in, uh, in the Western Cape. On these markets we do um, around between 14 and a half and 15 billion rands of sales annually, um, with volumes of between 3 million and 4 million tons, or 3 to 4 billion kilograms of fresh produce annually. So the magnitude of that is, is quite big. Um, what's important of our markets um, is that this serves as the price discovery mechanism in South Africa, where the price of fresh produce is discovered. Um, the importance of that to the producer is that it gives him a barometer or an indication of what, pro what price his product would be sold for. Because price is discovered on the market, um, we have a range of product ranging from a class one right down to a class four. And there's always, or most of the time, there is a buyer for that specific product. Because you have different LSMs in South Africa, and they come to the market, find a product that suits his price, find a product that suits his needs, and he buys that product. The advantage of that is that there's no barrier to entry within our markets. Any producer of any size with any type of quality can send his product to the market and he will be able to sell it through the market. On jo Johannesburg market, we have an excess of 8,000 buyers visiting this market on a, daily, on a daily basis. The price that is discovered on that market and then the price that the, con that the buyer pays on the market filters through right down to the end consumer because there's a lot of competition in South Africa. There's not a, a few change stores that that dominates the whole fresh produce industry. We have independence, we have hawker trade, we have people selling fruit and veg on the street corner. And if they outprice themselves in terms of what they're asking for the product, the competition will sort that out. So there's a natural process of uh, protecting, in a, in a way, the, the consumer at the end of the day in terms of the price that he pays for his product. So my advice to an end consumer would be in terms of fresh produce, if you want to buy fresh produce, shop around because you, would, you might get potatoes at 10 rand a kilo, but you might also get potatoes at 8 rand a kilo or 6 or 5 rand a kilo, depending on your needs and depending on the quality that you would be um, satisfied with. So make sure that you change your habits of buying at one place and shop around and see if you could buy quality that doesn't look as bright or as colorful, but the inside quality is exactly the same at probably 20, 30, 40% cheaper than you would buy at your store where you normally shop. Did you know, in the commercial value chain, vegetables mainly go to the four biggest fresh produce markets in Johannesburg, Tuane, Cape Town and Durban. What a great sight to see the work of our producers on display. Certainly reason enough to support them. Chris, aren't all the fresh produce markets in the cities? What about the rural areas? Uh, it's always been a problem. Um, the fresh produce markets belong to the to the municipalities, so the smaller the, the smaller municipalities do struggle to sort of keep standards up to scratch. But there have been some very heartening um, developments. For instance, ZZ2, the big tomato producer up north in Limpopo, 
um, they had a problem with their second grade tomatoes, just wasn't worth their while to bring them all the way to Joburg. So they started a fresh produce market there. Um, and it's been such a, uh, such a success. I mean, where, um, it started off from nothing, and today it's got an uh, uh, annual turnover of over 100 million rand. And it's a win-win situation. The local fresh produce guys can get rid of their, their produce, and the bucky traders, the guy, the informal traders, can get their, their produce right there on their doorstep. So, you know, the market always dictates if there's a demand, it will change. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. After the break, Mpumelelo is joined by economist Lindy Stribble from PMA to further discuss South Africa's vegetable industry with even more reasons why our producers need our support. Welcome back to Nation in Conversation. With me today in studio is Lindy Strubel, General Manager from the Produce Marketing Association, to help us understand how growth in this industry can be stimulated. Lindy, welcome to the studio. Thank you. And, and thanks for joining us. And uh, before we get into the mechanics and the economics of uh, this industry, it all, it's all about consumer taste. And uh, with the consumer now getting more sophisticated, how are the producers keeping a pace? See, that is pretty, pretty much the most important part of the industry, the vegetable industry, to understand the consumer. Um, the consumer changes constant, constant, constantly, yeah. and the consumer, um, these different fr um, areas of consumers that, or groupings of consumers in South Africa, mm. um, you can group them largely in three groups. It's the poor consumer who's very, very price sensitive mm. um, and make their decision on what the price is about. Mm. Then you've got the middle class, the larger group in the country, which is a perfect mix of being very price sensitive, especially now com compared to a couple of years ago. Very price sensitive, yet willing to pay for uh, convenience, for good quality. And then you've got the, the rich group. Um, a smaller group, but value-wise, very important because they spend a lot in the industry. Yeah. And they would pay a premium for um, convenience and high quality and um, location of where they buy it, etc. Mm. Um, so th the industry must understand the consumer, the questions they ask. Mm. The consumer want food, safe food. They want it um, conveniently located where they can buy it. Mm. And all of that determines the price and all of that determines the industry on how the industry responds to it. So there's a lifestyle issue to, to the tastes in addition to the health uh, oh, absolutely. issue. Absolutely. Um, the consumer, we, we are our own biggest enemy when it comes to price. Yeah. Um, because if you look, for instance, packaging, um, in some cases packaging, uh, the, the the product, the vegetables, as we buy it, mm. we pay more for the packaging it's in than the actual products that, that's in it. And that's not the supermarket's fault. That's mm. not the packaging um, company's fault. It's our fault because we demand it. So the price is influenced, for instance, by that. There's also a couple of el other elements um, beyond just the consumer's uh, preferences that, that would drive and determine price. And that's the efficiencies of our markets. You but, but to talk about packaging, I mean, can we safely say that you know, all of the nice, you know, packaging reflects the content. It's not just the nice and, um, and, ni and beautiful and convenient packaging. It's the mere fact of having packaging. Mm. If you would compare buying, if you would have your tomatoes on a big open table and yeah. you choose which ones you prefer to take and you put it into your container, nobody had to pack it. No plastic was um, used to package it for you before the time. Mm. No labor was there to, to make sure all of it was correctly done. Mm. Um, so that is a cost element that was added to it mm. and if you would basically just choose from a variety of the quality that you want mm. you didn't need any of that mm. but yet you and I are we lazy we've got busy uh, um, lifestyles so our time is limited mm. um, we want to go in take a bag and go out and mm. it needs to be the right color it needs to promote what we want etc mm. so that is a very important element so so you, so you would uh, say that the, the the consumer tastes at the moment and as well as health benefits that come with this kind of produce is actually drive, you know, the prices, whether they go up or down. Uh, it's, not, it's not some kind of, you know, people don't thumb suck the prices. 
No, absolutely. There's very clear price mechanisms that develop the price. But um, we are also influenced by perceptions. Um, we're under the wrong perception that hawkers, for instance, do not have high quality products. Um, if, you, if you take the products that's being bought, uh, sold at the fresh produce markets, those products, some of them would go to the supermarkets and some of them would end up at the, on the street with the hawkers. Um, the um, origin of that product is the same farm. Mm. And it was through the same process. At the end, the, the main maintenance of the um, shelf life does influence. But you can buy similar, very high quali quality products mm. on the street is what you get on the um, supermarkets. This is generally speaking now. So, but, it, so, so it is, so is a perception. Is the perception wrong that, you know, a hawker wouldn't sell a good quality product compared to, say, you know, a big uh, supermarket? In, in, in Sentin or in one of the sophisticated malls in South Africa. So that's not correct. The point of where they buy the product, it's the same quality. Yeah. But after that, of course, it depends on how they handled the product. Well, that's the point I wanted to come to. How, how, do the, 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 how, how does your, 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 your group of the suppliers, the, how do you keep it as healthy as possible, as fresh as it was when it was harvested? See, there's many um, uh, standards that you have to maintain. There's also um, also newly introduced inspection services at various points yeah. um, at supermarkets as well as the fresh produce markets. Mm -hmm. So that determined that we all get the same quality. But if you, at the end of the day, you can't determine if the supermarket's fridge was maintained at the right temperature yeah. or the handling of the products and, and at the, by a hawker was mm -hmm. handled by clean hands. Mm -hmm. That is the point where um, the differentiation of quality do come in. Mm. But in general, the quality is very similar. But besides that, there's also the issue of the farming techniques yeah. that, are, that, that are involved. How do farmers ensure that um, notwithstanding the kind of, uh, you know, capacity that, you know, hawkers and other uh, middle men people use, I mean, to market and sell the product, notwithstanding all of that, yeah. that the farmers produce in such a way that the produce can withstand whatever difficulties on the way to the market and they're still kept in good quality. Is there something that the farmers can do? There's a lot they can do. Um, they, it, it goes from the, the whole handling of the product, um, the, from the inputs they use, from the cultivars they use, from the genetics, it, it, right from there. Mm. The, the farmer can choose which um, product line they can go into. And that would determine also what quality, what type of product. Because a tomato is not a tomato. You've got tomatoes prepared for the canning industry, tomatoes that you and I use for our salads. Mm. There's the smaller tomatoes, the yellow tomatoes. You, you've got all that varieties in different and then you've got different genetics in, in, in that range as well. The mm. farmer selection of that is important. Their use of fertilizers, mm. their use of uh, chemicals and, um, and pesticides, all of that is also determined on um, what they can ask and in with that for but the But that means there's a lot of pressure now on the small producer to compete with a you know, highly sophisticated um, company like you know, ZZ2, um, Tommy Fansel and his team there who actually are highly mechanized. So how do all these, these producers cope in that, in that kind of environment where they, they have to lock up their stakes basically? Absolutely. The small farmer do have a, 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 a stand back on, on the bigger co um, uh, producers mm. for the main reason they don't have the advantage of economies of scale. Yeah. Um, economies of scale, with that means you can bring in more technology, you can, yeah. you can, fi you can spend more on your information and understanding. Mm. But there's absolutely no reason for a small farmer with a much more um, a simpler product, mm. um, not a very technical or a, a difficult product to produce, to mm. enter the market. Mm. And the fresh produce markets across the country provide for a market outlet for them as well. Yeah. Some of them successfully enter into contracts with, with supermarkets, mm -hmm. but that is a, a, a assured avenue for them to enter the market and access it. Because mm -hmm. they, with a, and that's the beauty of our fresh produce markets. If you would go to those platforms, you'd see the likes of an example that you use of ZZ2 delivering their products, as yeah. well as a small farmer delivering it in a bucky. Mm -hmm. And um, same on the, on the other end, on the buyer's end, yeah. where you will have your big shop right, a food lovers market trucks driving out there as well as a bucky trader going out and delivering either to the hawkers or selling himself somewhere. Yeah, great insights there. And let's hope that uh, 
emerging producers can take advantage uh, of what's happening in our country. This industry is really growing. Uh, thank you, uh, Lindy, for joining us and for sharing the information with us. Thank you. Uh, that was it uh, for today. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here at Nation in Conversation. Until next time. Thank you, Mpumelelo. Next week, we explore the game industry in South Africa, exotic game, as well as a special focus on rhinos, certainly not to be missed. We also explore the rapidly growing photography industry and find out why South Africa is the ideal destination to capture special moments. Remember to exercise your right as a consumer. Join the conversation. It affects us all. Until next week, goodbye. Nation in Conversation, taking you on a journey through the South African countryside. Proudly sponsored by Monsanto, Nedbank and Senves. In association with Hinterland and NWK.